Welcome back, Calvario Youth. I hope you guys are having a wonderful summer. Um, as you know by now, we are actually still in the middle of the pandemic, and unfortunately, we have to discontinue meeting for the time being until the numbers come down. I know it's not something we wanted to hear, but for the safety of others, we are going to be taking this approach. And so in the meantime, please continue to watch the videos. Don't forget to like them. And as we continue our study, we're still discussing treasure, talents, and time. And we're going to wrap up this series now because it's we're going to be continuing on in other subjects. But just really quick here, guys. So it's the last part of the time, which is the, the key essence. So let's begin. It's called treasure, talents, and time. Glorifying God in all that we do. We are wrapping up our series today. Like I said, hooray. <laughs> today we will discuss time. Let us recap about our topics. Number one, treasure. Our attitude or view of money, in other words, everything belongs to God. Remember that. Talents. God gave us natural abilities for his purpose, to expand the kingdom and glorify himself. Giving. Whether it's treasure, money, talents, or abilities, and time should be sacrificial. This is quality. Remember, it is quality, not quantity. And finally, the real motive for anything we do is love. Any other reason is a farce and a lie. Psalm 90:12, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. That's going to be the key verse in this, uh, the final part of our series in time. And that verse should tell us to watch out, as we, especially with times like these, all we have is time. <clears throat> Some of you have taken drama classes. Usually a date is set for opening night. Your roles are set and now you need to get into character. And memorize lines. Every act or scene is about timing. The director will guide each actor to the pre-written script. Did you know that God has a script written for you? He has you in mind. The most important aspect about this script is time. He will guide you to your destiny if you allow him. He is the director, the screenwriter, and executive producer all wrapped up as one. He is the creator of the stage that we are performing on whether we like it or not. We can submit to his direction or not. If we allow his mighty hand to guide us, we can take a bow in victory, closing our scene. Or you can choose to write your own script and make it a tragedy. The choice is yours. I think I believe it was the William Shakespeare. Life is, is a stage and we are just merely actors. And I'm just paraphrasing. And regardless whether you believe or not in God, there's a script. And a lot of people will fulfill their destiny, whether it will be in heaven or in hell. That's just a fact. And people can say, well, I don't believe that and I don't care. And But guess what? When you die, <laughs> the show is over. And you better make sure to find out where will it be your final act be. Will it be glorifying God or glorifying yourself? We are living in very hard times right now with this pandemic and a lot of people are confused and, and not knowing the future. Even for us as a family right now, we can't really plan a lot because well, we don't know what's going to happen. How school's going to look like? How is this going to be? What, does, what do we need to buy? Do we need to buy more face shields? What is it that we need to prepare for the upcoming future? We're also in election season. There's a lot of misinformation on the news, unfortunately. We live in a time where misinformation on the news, on the TV, is all over the place, the internet. And a lot of people can get confused. It is hard. But one thing that is always for sure and set in stone is the scriptures. And if we just continue to be in the scriptures and, and abide in Christ, we don't have to live in panic. We don't. If we abide in Christ, he'll guide our steps every single step of the way, just like the script. But we got to follow the script because you know that anytime we don't follow the script, things can get out of hand. This guide I saw from Christian Challenge and this has a very good um, suggestions for us to take. So let's continue. People arguably, arguably have the most discretionary time of their lives while in college. This gives great potential to be effective in ministry during these four, five, six plus years. However, in order to take advantage of this extra time, we must learn to be wise with how we manage it. Time is the most valuable asset in our life, even more valuable than money. Write that down. Hide, hide that in your hearts. Time is the most valuable asset in our life even more valuable than money. If you lose money, it can be regained. 
If you lose time, it's gone forever. That's the perspective you must have in order to be intentional with how you spend your limited time. In other words, that's your attitude. Your attitude in regards to time is that you have to understand that money can be lost. You can always regain it back. But time, you can't take those back. For some of you guys, you guys either just started junior high, others have just going on to high school, and for some, maybe you're going into college. Either way, this is a particular season of your, of your life and your time, you have to manage it very wisely. It's imperative that you make the most of your time while you're here on earth, for our lifetime is but a fleeting mist in the scope of eternity. In other words, your life is a vapor, like on a cold winter day when you go, and just as fast as it comes, as fast as it goes. Those who have a clear perspective on their limited time and use it intentionally for advancing the kingdom of God will most certainly become juggernauts for Christ. A juggernaut is defined as a powerful and an overwhelming force. Those who gain victory in this area will see how God can use them as a powerful and overwhelming force in advancing the gospel. God gave us 24 hours in a day to accomplish what we need to get done. This includes adequate sleep, rest, and play. However, it is when we sleep too much, rest too much, or play too much that we fall into trouble. Some people fall on the other side of the spectrum by spending too much time on a job or doing schoolwork. Although these are not bad activities, we must remember what's most important. It's possible that someone who falls into these traps does not have a proper perspective on managing their time wisely. We're going to show you five ways to make your time as effective as possible. Number one, put God first in your life. In Matthew 6, 33, it reads, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given you as well. Number one should always be God. Because with God, God, he is the director. He's writing your script, and he's, he knows the, the steps that you must take. Your steps in junior high, what classes you should be taking that's going to prepare you for high school. Likewise, in high school, there are certain classes, certain people you need to avoid, you know, and he's going to direct your steps. He wants to, you to be an effective person when you get older. And so in high school, that's your training. And each step of the way, he's going to direct you. So watch, number one, put God first in your life. Number two, you need more than just discipline, you need wisdom. Eschiastes 10.10 if the axe is dull and its edge unsharpened, more strength is needed. But skill will bring success. And I like this because recently we were doing, we were doing some kind of yard work, um, remodeling, so to speak. And I had some, uh, you know, clothes, thick hangers that were made of solid iron and, and concrete. And you have to, what I had to do was try to find a way to make it work, how to break it down in pieces because it was connected. So buying tools, having wisdom, because first I started chipping away with an ax, or not an ax, but a hammer. That wasn't an effective. It was taking too much time. It was like, it's true, I was taking too much strength. And I was wearing out. Finally, this is why God gives us a mind. He says, hey, buy a tool, buy an ax grinder. So I had to cut things in pieces and slowly break it apart, load it up, take it to the dump. Otherwise, I would be forever doing it. And this is where the next part goes you don't need to work harder you just need to work smarter the smarter you work the more effective you will become in managing your time and completing tasks I always told this to my son work smarter not harder I don't know about you but there's nothing worse than working with people who just do things and make it twice as hard and when you know the solution you try to give them suggestions they're like no I want to do it my way all right that's why God wants us to follow his script when we follow our script we make things so much difficult Number three, you must make goals and make plans to reach those goals. Proverbs 16, 9, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Make sure our plan should be aligning to the script what God has for us. Make sure we are seeking God and his script. And once again, we can make plans, but ultimately he will have to guide our steps. This pandemic has made it hard for us. And especially when um, making plans for the future. Right now, we really can't because things are changing constantly in the news. But here you can make smart applications. Number one, be specific. Number two, 
Make sure it's measurable. Number three, action oriented. Number four, realistic. And number T and number uh, five, timely. S M A R T, smart. So if you use that acronym, being specific, measurable, action oriented, realistic, and timely, you can make that kind, of, make that plan of yours, and make sure it aligns with God, and it'll be more effective for you than for you to do just spinning your wheels. Number four, grasp the, gap, the gravity of our limited time. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. I like another translation is, redeem the time. Look carefully how you walk. Right now, things are uncertain. There's a lot of uncertainty going on. So right now is the time to say, take a step back, breathe, pray, God, what do I do next? And a lot of times, he's just going to show you the next step. That's why he says he'll direct your steps. And it's usually one step at a time. He doesn't give you the 12-step plan, 15-step plan. No, it's usually one step at a time. But be faithfully and take the faith and walk one step at a time. James 4.14 Why do you don't, don't not even know, excuse me, let's just repeat that again. Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Same thing we talked about earlier. Our life is nothing but a vapor. It's like the clouds. I see the clouds, they come, they form, and they disappear. That's our life. <laughs> That's it. Every generation passes. Let me ask you this. Do you remember your great-grandparents' names? How about your great-great-grandparents' names? And if you're like me, you probably don't know their names. I might know like maybe one or two. That's because I've probably studied it because I'm like a history buff. But in reality, I don't know my great-great-grandparents' names. Why? Because as quickly as their generation comes, I'm going to pass off this earth. In Psalm 39.5, You have made my days a mere handbreadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Everything is but a breath, even those who seem secure. We're going to be passing to this earth, and we don't know how much time we got left. For some, we might be dying next week. That's the truth. You know, a lot of people are dying from COVID-19. For some people are. And for some, it's, it's, it's stricken some families. For some, it hasn't. You know, and, and for those who have stricken, you know, my condolences to them, too. Just like that. The diseases that come, they come and they take our lives, no matter how old or how young. In some seasons of your life, you will work harder and more often than others. If you put God first, understand what's important in your life, and realize your limited time here on earth, then you will have a recipe for planning your time accordingly. Search God. Seek Him. Find out exactly what you're here for. Do it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your life. Manage your time wisely. Number five, fulfill the mission God has called you to do. Honoring and glorifying God must be the ultimate motto for our actions in life. We place our sights on the eternal, not the temporary. John 9, 4. As long as it is a day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. The way you spend your time has eternal implications. Whether you make a good or bad decision on spending your time, it will have an eternal consequence. In 2 Timothy 2, 2, 3, And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. There is no discipleship or disciple making without being serious about life and having a militant and loyal devotion to the Great Commission. I like what it says. The way you spend your time has eternal implications. Whether you make it a good or bad decision on spending your time, it will have eternal consequences. Everything we do, everything, okay, has eternal consequences. And you might say, oh, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. The people you hang out with, the, the friends that you have, the choices you make, anything you do has eternal complications. And I want you guys to start making better decisions, even myself, even as adults. You know, this message can be for the adults because even adults, we still are still stupid. And that's the truth. God calls us sheep because sheep are dumb. And it doesn't matter how old, you could be a young sheep or an old sheep or a lamb and still make dumb decisions. And so let us continue to seek God first and, and humble ourselves and just, you know, God, you're in control. Finally, how you spend your time is more important than how you spend your money. 
you know, I've been putting a lot of thought to this and time is very limited. i would be honest with you, I never thought I'd live past 30. There was times in my life that I didn't think I would make it to 20. And, and all this time, you know, I always thought, even my parents, like, that my parents are going to be around. Well, because growing up in high school, I had um, a couple of guys that lost their parents in high school, others in their, in their early adult, and it, it took a toll on their lives because they, they were their parents. You know, we sometimes we depend on our parents. And it's a scary time. It was a scary time for them. So I naturally had a fear. And I've always thought that my mom was going to pass away and my dad was going to pass away. And guess what? They're still alive today. And now that I'm a parent myself, you know, I want to see the Lord, but I also want to be effective. Like Paul, I desire to see the God, but if I have work to do here, then let me, let me do it. And especially now that once you get saved, and for you guys that are young, make the most of your time. That is so awesome that you have the ability to dictate to make a better future. For some of us adults, we made some bad choices along the way, and now we're just playing catch up. And now we have to work harder just to get back the lives that we lost, the, the time that we lost. And we can't get back that time. And some stuff, like I can't go back and I, my, one of my biggest regrets was I wish I could have had a, you know, I wanted to be a police officer one time or a firefighter because I wanted to be in the service, whether it be a police or a firefighter. Either way, the decisions that I made during those times in my youth costed those opportunities. And now at a certain age, you can't go back. You can't go back, well, I want to go back and do this. No. I can't go back and retake certain classes. It doesn't make sense. It's a waste of time. Now I have to be a father. I have to be a husband. And now I have to pour my life and encourage my own family, my son, my wife, and just to have them make better decisions. Don't make the same mistakes that I've made. So remember, guys, whatever we do, glorify God in all that we do, and especially time. Have a blessed week. We're still praying that we get together. And until then... Stay in the scriptures. Remember that God loves you. Peace.